we know that we're in the second wave. And we know that it will be worse than the first wave. But what we don't know yet is how bad the second wave will be. The reality is, it's up to each of us. Together, our collective actions will decide if we face a wave or a tsunami. The second wave of COVID-19 is here, according to the premiers of Ontario and Quebec, as those provinces collectively report nearly 1,500 new cases. According to public health officials, there's been an average of 1,175 new COVID-19 cases reported daily in Canada over the past week, but that doesn't factor in today's numbers. In Ontario, 700 new cases of COVID-19 announced today, an all-time high in daily cases in the province. Most of the reported cases are are coming out of three regions, Toronto, Peel and Ottawa. 60% of the cases are in people under the age of 40. Over in Quebec, the province is reporting 750 new cases. Just last hour, we heard the Premier announce that Montreal and Quebec City are now in the red zone, the highest alert level in the province, shutting down as of October 1st, restaurants, bars, museums and casinos. In the wake of this resurgence, a group of Ontario doctors is calling on the provincial government to backtrack from stage three of reopening to stage two. Dr. Callie Barrett is one of them. She's a critical care physician with the University Health Network and part of their COVID modeling team. She joins us from Toronto. Hi, Dr. Barrett. Good to see you. Thank you very much for making time for us. Hi, thank you. I just quickly wanted to, if you don't mind, because we've been watching the update from Quebec before I, I get you some specifics from you on Ontario, get your initial reaction to what we heard from the premier there. Basically, in the sort of quote unquote hottest regions, Montreal, Quebec City, as well as Chaudière, Appalaches, they are essentially reverting back to the last stage. So closing restaurants, bars, casinos, anywhere where you can kind of get together with people inside. And they're also saying don't invite anyone into your house. Like if you live in that address, stay there. Otherwise, don't invite someone from another address into your house. Is that expected based on what you've seen there as far as the spread of the virus lately? Well, I mean... My modeling, the, the modeling collaborative that I'm a part of based out of uh, the University of Toronto, we've been primarily focusing on Ontario and the case numbers that we've seen here. But I think certainly the numbers, the rising case numbers here in Ontario and similarly the rising case numbers in, on, in Quebec um, are, are concerning and they're in keeping with some of the trajectories that our modeling collaborative uh, predicted as a possibility here in Ontario. So it se certainly seems reasonable that uh, a government would uh, enact these policies that are really restricting socialization and enforcing essentially or making policy physical distancing. So we heard Premier Ford say that the second wave is coming, it's here and it, and it might be worse than the first wave. Is, is that accurate from what, you, the, what you've been looking at? Well, we modeled f many scenarios, but our worst case scenario considered the Italian first wave uh, epidemic trajectory and it considered what, uh, if the infections were primarily among the high risk sort of elderly populations, so our long-term care centers, our patients with lots of medical comorbidities. And certainly in that scenario, it definitely looks like it is potentially uh, a catastrophic tsunami, as uh, Premier Ford said, with more hospitalizations and more patients admitted to the intensive care unit than we saw in the first wave. So yes, it's absolutely a possibility. So what can stop it from being uh, definitive? What can stop it from happening? Is it a rollback of restrictions? And if so, what specifically would you be looking for? So, you know, the actual, the, the specific policies are up to the political leaders and the, the government, but what would you know recommend, that, sorry, I should say. <laughs> what, well, what, what works is masking, universal masking, and, and everyone being really, really um, adherent to masking, not pulling your mask down when you're talking, um, not going into other people's houses, not going inside, not where we know that the virus is really much more likely to be spread in, in indoors where the ventilation and the airflow isn't as good, um, and, and not adhering to physical distancing. Um, they're simple, but they're hard. And until we have uh, a vaccine and we have so-called herd immunity through a vaccine, not through widespread transmission of the virus. We really don't have anything else. It's, it's really down to individuals following those very simple but ch challenging public health measures of physical distancing, masking, and hand washing. 
around the physical distancing portion most centrally, I think because that has the widest impacts, for example, for businesses, for how you socialize in your home, and especially as we're coming into a part of the year where much of Canada is not going to have the option of even trying to socialize outside. Uh, how, how, how long do you think that persists for? Like, do, is this until, I know you kind of said it, but does this mean, I'm just trying to like translate it for, for people who are watching, does this mean I should not be getting together with my family for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, et cetera, et cetera? I think right now, based on the trajectories that we're seeing and the fact that our modeling uh, uh, predictions were a peak in October of mid to, or sorry, a peak of cases in mid to late October, that's Thanksgiving. Um, so I think when uh, uh, Justin Trudeau, our prime minister last week said that, you know, Thanksgiving might be canceled, I think he was on point there. Um, whether or not we can save Christmas, so to speak, is really up to us. And it's hard for us to model that far out into the future. Our predictions are really only good in the in the more near term. And, and that as we go farther out, it's less certain. And that's partially because we can change what the pandemic trajectory looks like for December. So if we all adhere to those public health measures, we might be able to actually flatten the curve and things could open up a little bit. I know, I know as you mentioned, the, the politicians make the decisions, but based on what you've seen, is your recommendation uh, when you're you know, talking about social distancing or physical distancing for Ontario to, for example, follow Quebec suit to start restricting certain businesses more or places where that kind of congregation can happen? Well, I think it's very concerning that we're hearing about these outbreaks in restaurants among young people going to restaurants and bars late at night. And I think it's certainly um, appropriate. And I was encouraged to see some new restrictions on restaurants and bars. Um, but I, I really I think even in the absence of policies that are different, um, individuals should really be reflecting on their own decision making um, and really doing what they doing their part to to help flatten the curve. I know you looked at various scenarios and, and we mentioned sort of like the worst case one. If they do heed what you're saying, if people are sort of taking this to heart right now, what is the, the best case scenario? Like, is there a, a chance that these actions have very direct impacts that, you know, mean that we're not you know hold up inside for the next eight months? So, you know, Ontarians should really give themselves a pat on the back. We did a really good job of flattening the curve in the spring. We prevented our health system from being overwhelmed. And it was because of the lockdown and because of the sacrifices we all made with physical distancing and not getting together for Easter and all of our holidays in the spring. And I think, you know, we can do it again. Um, and the really challenging thing about this virus and this pandemic and the fact that it's global and we have no effective vaccine yet is that we're going to have to... We're, there's going to be periods where we, we loosen up and we, we interact a little bit more. The virus is going to spread and then we're going to have to con constrain our contacts again. So this is probably going to be something that ebbs and flows over until we fully have a vaccine and it's it's made widespread uh, globally. Right. So, yes, it's it's we we can flatten the curve. We can. We're going to have to do it multiple times, though, I think, until we have a vaccine. OK, thanks, Dr. Barrett. Appreciate your insights and expertise this evening. Yep, my pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Kelly Barrett is a critical care physician with the University Health Network. She joined us from Toronto. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.